What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a title that I actually know very, very little about. I'm going into this one fresh for the true first impressions. It's called As We Descend, and about a month ago the developers reached out and they said they had sort of like a secret project they're working on and asked if I wanted to take a look at it. And I said, sure, whenever you're ready to go, let's do this thing, because it had like a cool looking art style. Well, it's now that time, so we're going to do some first impressions today on As We Descend and figure out whether or not it deserves a spot on your coveted wish list. As far as I understand, this is some kind of, like, city-building, underground, post-apocalyptic, enemy-fighting card game or something like that, so let's go ahead and give it a go. Link's down below along with the link to my Discord and my Twitch stream. Let's start it on off. Okay, so we got Fancy Lady inside Magic Dome and sort of Frostpunk looking city. Okay. That's actually a live action replay of what happens at my house after I go out for tacos on Tuesday nights. Uh, the Summons, a command bearing the blood red seal of the Troika. You would be wise to go. Okay. Before you stands the Lord Attendant, mouthpiece of the Troika Council. The cycle brings mixed tidings. The force field has drained the city vault's power, has washed away. The people whisper of end times, but know that this means Ava will bring us to Haven. May the machine god continue her great work. You, the council has decided that you are granted the title of Warden of the Wall. You will retrieve the parts to repair the city. Okay, so we gotta find a reactor rod? All right, what's a Warden of the Wall? Warden of the Wall is not a title granted lightly, he said to the guy that doesn't know what it is that he just gave the title to. Uh, the restriction on venturing into the blighted land remains for those in the city, but you will be able to pass beyond the gates with a handful of your loyalists. Once you cross the threshold, there is but a small price to pay. You are exiled beyond the wall for fear of rot and taint. You will make camp outside the gate. Yo, this doesn't seem like a promotion. This is the worst. I don't want to do- I want to live on the inside the wall. Fine. Take these envoys with you. After you repower the city, you will be able to utilize them to compel citizens to come to your aid. Vitally, you also have this expeditionary force. Bring them to the rally point to set forth into the outside and find that reactor rod. So we've got expedition force, and then we've also got envoy. That allows us to speak with people inside the city. Okay. Uh, so I can send an envoy somewhere. This is glowing, so I'm guessing I'm going to send an envoy into a dark alley. When they picked me to be the Warden of the Wall, I get the feeling they weren't sending their best. With nary a light save the fire's glow, the market plaza is an unnavigable mess. Stuck in this side of the alley, not knowing left from right, perhaps more options will open up in the market after the emergency power is restored. Uh, let's search to the left, I guess. We'll go with the sinistral direction. When the hour of darkness is upon us, a, seeking of, a seeker of light will brave the sea of corruption to bear the sun upon their back. Alright, is there anything I can do with this one? I can't do anything with this one because it says the city must be repowered first. Alright, expeditionary force to the rally point. Hail the new warden of the wall who will carry us to the new light. Guide us through the ancestral pathways to our lost birthright. The scavenger teams are already assembled, eager for action. What's going on? We can ask them for guidance. All right. The lead scavenger pauses. Yes, Warden? What is the goal of the expedition? There are relics left by some greater will, seated in the earth around us. They will give us the providence we require to advance. We sell what we find to those in the city. This will give us copper and boons that we require to survive. What's outside the walls? The scavengers have crawled this area before, have seen many hosts of creatures around, some deadlier than others. Fighting back has gone better than simply cowering. The air itself is deadly, and we must all stay close to her radiance. Be ready to cover us at the first sign of trouble. Alright, so we've got destinations. Uh, we can go get a super grub. I don't think that I want to venture out into the post-apocalyptic waste to go find, like, a hot dike sized worm. I think I'm good on that. Let's go get the reactor rod, maybe? Oh, it does say that people are interested in that. All right, let's go get the reactor rod. Skitterlings are small, bloodthirsty molters. Dispatch them before their strength is overwhelming. 
All right, so I got this guy right here. He apparently goes inside of there. Uh, does the lantern? Oh, the lantern is just like a, a thing that I have. All right. Okay, so we've got these little dudes with the swords and shields over here. We can, like, smite an enemy. They've got 24 HP, and they can be staggered. I'm guessing that's filling up that little meter down there. Guaranteed. So inflicting stagger on an enemy that's at 50% stagger will expose them. All right. Fair enough. So it looks like we can attack, and it looks like there's different ranges. Like, these guys are going to move. Where can I move to? I can move forward. Okay. Maybe I'll just go with, like, a, a heavy slashinator first and see if we can mess these dudes up. Heavy slashes. All right, so he's, like, a little bit scuffed up. It looks like I can run and empower. Let's do that. Should I have done that first? What does empowering these guys do? Enhances the unit's next empowered card with a bonus effect. Oh, it's that secondary effect at the bottom. I should have played that first. All right, we're starting off with some nice and early misplays. This is the downside to first impressions videos. It doesn't look like they're attacking just yet. Oh, they are attacking now. Well, that negates one attack. That negates a second attack. Well, almost, kind of, a little bit. I guess I'll smack this guy. Oh, he's been exposed. Very nice. What does this do? Like, repositions me closer? I mean, I guess we have melee weapons, so being closer... Oh, my God. Uh, let's, like, smite you. He has been smited. I would say we empower. And then maybe we stagger. I don't think he got staggered. I think he's still good. He's looking awfully okay to me right now. All right, so we have the four barrier. I guess on the last turn I didn't get the eight because there's something different than empowered that like controls that. Go ahead and end the turn. The damage does penetrate, and it looks like we get a counter attack if we're inside base contact. So it looks like they sort of like auto battle, and the cards are just a thing that you play as like the main mechanic. What's he doing? He wants to put a beneficial buff on himself. Okay, I'll take 12 damage right there. That's good. And then he's got to take the next turn to break from the stagger. If I play those, do I get to keep my shield on the next turn or does it go away? Uh, it looks like it degrades by half, so that's not nearly as bad as I expected. Let's go with another light barrier right there, just in case for whatever reason, me not understanding the game just yet. Like, I get what we're doing, but, you know, I don't know if there's going to be any secrets and surprises. Warden, the rewards of the expedition are at hand. Let us revel in our successful scavenge. They quickly get to work excavating their hall from the ruin now that you've cleared the way. Those in the city will be grateful for this hall. Come, let us return with our spoils. All right. Let's get the hell out of here. Uh, did that bypass a cycle, or are we still in a cycle? Let's take this thing. Oh, I can power stuff back up. So there's a force field generator. Oh, force field generators are all over the city. All right, put that in right there. It is foretold the lantern workers will immediately begin restoration on our most vital systems. However, your duty is not yet over. That's true. I got a lot of duty inside of me. We still require more energy for all of the city's mechanisms to be fully operational, and the force field will be running at only a fraction of the maximum potential. Is it even possible to restore it? With your inquiring mind, I've mistaken you for a guild acad academic. The important thing for you is to keep retrieving reactor rods. You'll find them marked on your map. Okay. After the guild researchers inspect the rod, one of them comes back with two small items in their hands. This reactor piece was abnormal. Those excess parts cannot be fitted into the reactor. Perhaps you can find a way to make use of them, courtesy of the council. Alright, what are they? The first, a Mythion core with a fracture down the middle. Nonetheless, it hums with power. The other is an ancient module with exposed ports. It's not unlike the technology of the city walls. Okay. Wherever the corpse of man is, there the vermin will gather. After the tribulation of these cycles, the astrum will be darkened and the sphere will not give its light and the cores will fall from the sky and the powers of celestials will be shaken. All right, I'll take all my stuff. Is 20 force field good? It's filling up a little meter, so I'm guessing it's a good thing. Where does that go? It goes to this guy. 
And then does this go anywhere? It goes over there. All right. The room is filled to the brim with ancient instruments and machinery. A man stands in the midst, turned away. Leave it on my desk. He hasn't even bothered to turn around. Given the precarious amount of clutter and precision tools on the desk, there's only two safe spots to place it. Uh, we can either get more barrier or we can get more empowered. I guess I'll get more barrier. The projectors don't displace objects, they inversely attract. If this could be harnessed, we might be able to get our ansibles to be sturdy enough for handheld communications. That would be a radical breakthrough. Anyone could hold a device in their hand. Okay. Your old mentor is hammering away on a red-hot copper plate as you walk in. Back, I see. Hope the council didn't give you too much trouble. I take it you're not just here out of nostalgia. Hand over the fragment. He tosses the fractured core between his hands, nodding and grumbling. Hold on. After a long while of clanking and sizzling, your mentor comes back out, followed by a group of crossbow troopers. I heard you ran into some creatures outside. These imbued crossbows will take care of that. Oh, sweet, dude. I get arbalests? Hell yeah, dude. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So really, we get three options here. Uh, we have... Apparently, against enemy weak points, we get double damage with that ability. Or our auto attack, that thing that they get in between turns when you're at the proper range, that becomes a double attack. Uh, and puts, well, it puts dazed on them, unfortunately. Or we can get fire bombs, which lower the amount of shield that enemies get. So I'll probably take the fire bombs. Those sound awesome. I want that. Yes, I recruit you. Welcome to my party. I'm liking the production values here. Oh, the little areas like light up when you mouse over them too. You catch a glimmer of pride in his eye. And I can't, oh, I can do something with this guy, the market stall. A basket is set out and it is covered with cloth scraps and something twinkles inside. It's labeled take one for free. Low risk. So we've got a 72% chance to gain two favor or none at all. Or we can just take some bandages favor no dude 72 percent chance in battle brothers terms that's basically a guaranteed hit fine my heart is full of depression the post-apocalypse is not working out for me so this is some kind of track over here there's a boss we gotta fight a heavily armored biohazard. He leaks deadly toxins everywhere. Oh my god, there's so many things we have to do right now. Okay. Um, I guess I'll speak to people. The veteran forge master is willing to help you train your troops. Alright, teach him a new combat card. Uh, so it looks like our vanguard can get pry open, which deals 12 damage and shreds armor. Okay. We can get Dust Bomb, which puts Feeble and Dizzy on the enemy. Or we can get a second Fire Bomb for stacking up fires to more Fire Bombs. Let's go. Fire Bombs everywhere. All right, so we have all the Fire Bombs in the world. Since you have the Innkeeper's Blessing, the tavern automatically sends refreshments to restore your troops in between battle. Units which are fatigued from battle heal less than units you spare from battle. Additionally, you can send an ally here to get extra benefits. Okay, what does this one do? The Elder's preaching echoes through the plaza, glow with new light, reaching the gathered masses. The sermon has grown rapturous. It is the seeker of light themselves in our moment of need. Praise be unto them that the corruption has now washed away. How may we honor thee? I can either get favor or I can get money. Um, I'm going to be pragmatic and I'm going to take favor because I'm Machiavellian. I don't know what we spend favor on, but it's probably something good. It says it lets us use special combat actions. So I'm guessing that's the card like the empower with the one or whatever on it. The yellow one. So we actually, this is kind of like a resource that we need to do dope like divinely manifested things like throw a fire grenade. To ever left this device, Eureka, this is just what we need to make the next level of breakthrough. Run this sequence through any lantern devices you find, and you should be able to make the same modification that I did. Okay. Inflict 20 bonus stagger on every enemy. Apply 10 barrier, and then daze everything underneath it. Okay, so like we're basically skipping their auto attack in order to like super shield them. Or we can get incinerate. I want incinerate. Give me that. Okay, so I can send out another scout. 
Let's send a scout to the shopkeeper. A simple shop that sells trinkets. I can get favored trinkets, and that'll give me two favor, or I can buy some bandages to heal my guys. Uh, let's get some bandages, I guess. That sounds good. I feel like it's going to clog up my deck a little bit, but like, oh, I can get both. Nice. I was worried that I wasn't going to get my bonuses. There's good, like, quality of life when it comes to the UI here, how when you pick up items, it draws a trail to the thing that it increased and whatnot to draw your eye. That's good. I guess we have nothing else to do but deploy an expedition. Uh, we can go get a relic over here, or we can go get a grub. I'm going to go get the grub-a-dub-dub. -dub. All right, so I only get one combat slot. I definitely want to check these guys out because of the incinerate. Like, I've got a lot of fire grenades, and I'm really, really optimistic about fire and flames. I feel pretty good about it. We drew our barriers on the first go, so let's barrier up. Because I think we're about to get clunked pretty decently. Six damage, hits twice, apply burning four. All right, throw a grenade at him. Fire grenade. All right. End the turn. Okay, these guys may have not been the best thing to bring along. Uh, it looks like they're going to do barrier and buff. Okay, so if I empower, empower is not the same thing, is it? I can trigger... Okay, so I can do that. I can put that in right there, and then we can throw that over there, and it says it'll trigger the burning effect immediately. And then I would say just incinerate. Very nice. So he's got to recover from his stun, and this guy's going to put up a barrier or whatever, but we're focusing on this guy anyway, so who cares? Okay. They didn't auto-attack the one that I was hoping they would auto-attack, but I suppose that's life. Uh, let's get barriers running. Okay, a little bit more damage out. We're going to do a quick shot over there to get rid of the main source of damage. I'm on a light barrier just to take the edge off this hit because it does seem to be like kind of a big hit. And then we're going to trigger burning on this guy immediately so that at least we get some damage off and we've got him like dotted up a little bit. And hopefully I'll pull my bandages here. Oh, good. We stunned him. Hell yeah. I did pull the bandages, so let's get those applied. We'll go with a firebomb. A quick shot. Ooh, we got him in the head. Okay, so he's got different targeting points, too. We gotta fight some kind of boss or something in a minute. Warden, the grisly rewards of the expedition are at hand. Let us revel in the harvest. A super grub and a dream fruit. I like the art style a lot. I think the art style looks pretty cool. Time to forget the trauma of battle. Soothe your soul with the dream fruit slumber. Oh, I can forget a combat card. So you can actually, like, tailor these guys by adding and removing things. Okay, I figured once you added them, it was probably permanent, but... I'll just take the item with me. I don't think we need it for right now. It'll come back up tomorrow anyways. And then we've got to take that to our mentor. I guess I could have taken it to her. I can upgrade a unit's combat card. Okay, let's give you guys a little bit of love and touch and squeezing because you guys haven't really... That gives it plus one damage. That gives that plus two damage and way more stagger. Although it gives reposition an extra draw. Let's do that. A warrior and their weapon fight as one. Okay, right, there's nothing else we can do today, I don't think, because we can't interact with any of these places without, like, one of the little cards that allows us to. What you got for me? Oh, cool. We can teach a guy a new card. Hell yeah. So we can give our Vanguard an armor ability, but it dazes them yet again, so we'll lose our auto action, but it gives them a flat four damage mitigation which is nice. 
Uh, we can mobilize on our vanguard, which allows them to swap around. There's two zones. Okay, so there's no tutorial for this game. It gave me a warning at the beginning that it's still in development. So there's two zones. There's the guard zone, and there's the support zone. Okay, fair enough. Or we can give them strafing shot, which is free. It moves them up to the guard zone, so that puts them on the front line, but it deals six damage, but it's free. So if you pull that in a reposition at the same time, technically you could move them forward then backwards again, I would hope. It seems like these guys benefit from being mobile, so I'll try to keep that in mind. Uh, we do have a missive that we can send out. I don't have any money right now. Let's go to the market building, maybe. The work pits are a place of endless toil. The foreman ensures that there is a steady supply of serfs, young and old, being sent down to the pits. I'll take it there won't be any trouble here, warden. He jingles a few coins. I mean... If he wants to, I wasn't going to do anything bad, so if he just wants to pay me, oh, I like how each individual coin goes into the meter. Good job, developers. Exactly how I would have designed it. What's in the market stall? The curator of curios always has odd wares on display. Might I interest you in this wondrous helmet? He waves a dusty orb at you, or this instead. So we can, they take 50% damage and become fatigued, but they can delete a card, or... We have a chance to gain 30 bucks. I don't want to, like, brain wipe one of my dudes, so I'm going to risk it for the biscuit on some money. Cool. Well, now I can go to the store tomorrow and buy more stuff. That pleases me. Little bit of menu gore right there, though. The little green number is cut off halfway through, so they're going to need to get that fixed. What else do we have? I don't want to give that to her because that just wipes out an ability. I guess we got to go to the rally point. There is a bustle at the rally point, and the scavengers have halted. Something is emerging from the corruption. We dare not provoke it. Okay, let's shore up defenses. The city folk speak of shapes that stir within the miasma. Take caution. Would you give me ready the defenses for the storm? Okay, so I can either put that on the forum, or I can put it on my mentor. My mentor has been pretty beneficial so far, so I'm going to put it on him. With the ominous encroaching miasma on the horizon, your mentor offers to help you prepare. Okay. Oh, I could get a perk if I had more favor. Okay, so we've got an easy trigger over here. Auto attack is a multi-attack. All right, we can get another firebomb. Or we can get pry open, which gives us 12 damage and shreds the enemy's armor. That sounds good. That's a lot of damage. I'll take that. All right, next cycle. That thing's kind of gross. But at least we get our full forces this time around. So that's good. Let's deploy for battle, maybe. My lantern is a little bit empty for, like, special abilities, which worries me. But we did pull Incinerate on the first turn, so 6 damage and 7 damage with armor breaking. He's going to attack the lantern. Okay. Well, maybe we smite him then to, like, try to cancel that out. Oh, I don't think we procced it, dude. Okay, throw a firebomb on him. I'm not happy with that turn. I was hoping we would get the stun right there. Because I think he's going to attack my magic voodoo lady in the back lines. Uh, yes, he did attack my magical voodoo lady. I was unable to stun him in time. Auto attacks went out, but those guys are in the back line now, which makes this more complex. No attacks going out, just barriers. So let's focus on DPS here. Okay, so we can only hit the one in the front. Gotcha. You guys re reposition forward. I guess smite to there. It's all that I have. And then maybe you guys shield up.
Okay, so he's stunned, but now this guy is doing the siege thing. So I have to defend this. So we'll put some barrier on it. We will empower you. Let's finish that guy off. I get the feeling that's our successful thing to do, is just to limit the amount of enemies on the field for as long as possible. Okay, they blocked two, but they took a little bit of damage. Auto attack went to the back line, which I think is okay. What's he about to do? Unfortunately, I don't really have much to play with here, so I think we're just gonna have to eat the hit on whoever's in the guard zone. Let's put a bunch of burning on this guy. And then we'll send a quick shot his way, just to let him think about it a little bit. We do have a strafing zone. And then I can reposition them back like so, so that they get the free damage, but they also are not going to get smacked. These guys are going to get chewed up, though. Nine damage is kind of no joke. Okay, he's down. We are now officially... He's going to attack them. Okay, give me some barrier. I would like a quick shot. They're going to eat about six damage, though, and it's probably not going to be very tasty. But we are finally putting damage on the guy, so that's good. Uh, smite him. Maybe stop that from going off. Get some preemptive barrier over here. Maybe reposition them back. I might put the archers in the front for a minute. Just to see how it goes for us. 17 damage out to whom? So it says I gotta recycle these. Okay, they've been recycled. We are officially recycled. 17 damage is a pretty beefy hit, though. His meter's filling, but it's not there yet. Fire. Hey, we canceled the attack. All right. Let's go ahead and empower them. So we can get 1.5... So we can get 50% more damage. It'll deal 16 or 18 damage if we go for the head. If we go for the shell and destroy it... It will reduce his armor down to zero and then weaken his barrier generation. And his barrier has been a little bit of a headache. Let's do that. It halved his barrier. Very nice. And so it looks like that regenerates in a couple of turns. Okay, I can live with that. We bought ourselves time. And time is really what I needed. So I think we're in okay shape right now. 15 damage, though, is kind of terrifying. If I reposition them back, will that actually hit anybody? I guess I'll take a risk here with my little guys. He attacks randomly. I should have read first. Okay. All right. I can get a firebomb and a quick shot, or I can get a heavy slash. That lowers the amount of barrier that he generates, so I guess we'll just try that out. Oh, good. He hit the unit I was hoping he was going to hit. He's got 21 going out to a random unit, and we don't know who it's going to be. Oof. Okay. I guess save the guards. Well, it's going to kill whoever it hits, all right? There's not much we can do here. But auto attack should finish him, so we managed to hold the gate for a little bit. I like it. I dig it. It's interesting so far. I dis I dislike strong games car I'm sorry. I dislike card games strongly. There we go. I can speak words with my mouth today. A computation chip. All right. When well, we got our expedition force, do they count as fatigued now? Is that what happens? Now that their HP is low. Well, it doesn't I can't really check for right now. What you got for me? Teach a unit a new combat card. Okay, so my... They got dash attack. Move to the guard zone and deal 9 damage. That's really, really good. 
It's cheap and it does a ton of damage. Let's take it. And if I can use that to get rid of some of their other stuff, that would be good. What do you have over here? The Lord Attendant nods approving of your work so far. To better grant you access to the city, you have a choice of new ally. We can get an investigator or we can get a brute. I mean, she's got the cool witch hunter hat, so I'm going to go with her. I'm, I'm choosing this entirely based on hat-related accessories. So the computation chip goes up to the relic researcher. He offers a simple conundrum. We can upgrade a lantern card or we can forget a lantern card. Let's upgrade one. Ooh, that adds burning three to everybody if I upgrade it. Do it. I want that. I like fire builds. I like things that burn. Although when I play wizards in video games, I always go with ice and lightning. I don't know why. Uh, so the rabble was correct. Monstrosities lay at the heart of the storm. We must be vigilant with the threat so close to the city. The council requests that you take further action to safeguard the outside. A new rare unit. Sick. A bombardier, a knight, or a zealot. I want the knight. He's kind of tanky, and I feel like we don't have anybody like super tanky right now. It seems like that's his shtick, is that he's like the tanky one that eats hit. Another has sworn the oath and joined your ranks, a small gift from the Troika Council that bears strings. Alright. Oh no, once you pick an action, you're stuck. I wanted to go back. This is not doing what I thought it would do. I was going to heal that group of guardmen that got knocked out, but I think they need to go to the, uh, the inn. So I, I can't get out now. There's no back or anything. Once you're in, you're locked in. So I guess I'll just heal them. Let's go to the innkeeper. Regale the pub goers with Delver deeds. Yeah, let's take a collection, I guess. I guess that comes in tomorrow. We can investigate the work pit. There's been another collapse. It's just time you're just in time to pick through the rubble. I've got a 41% chance to get three allies in the next cycle. Or a 72% chance to get 25 bucks tomorrow. I mean, if we're in it to win it, let's just go for the risky one, I guess. Pull them back from the brink while their corporeal form yet retains a hint of warmth. Pay 25 to revive a unit with 40% health or just revive a unit with 80% in two turns. I'll take that because I just got that tank guy anyways. So I think that works. Apparently we have the ability to revive the dead in this universe. I dig it, dude. I don't like card games. I'm very biased against card games. I'm not a huge fan of them. Uh, but this is interesting. It kind of combines things from like Cultist Simulator where you're investigating locations. The combat is interesting and unique compared to what I've seen inside the genre before. First impressions are positive along with the production values and the art style. First impressions are positive. Uh, this right here is As We Descend. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, As We Descend. Tomorrow, something else. Thanks for spending time with me and that's all I got for you folks. Bye bye.